Hello, I'm Verna Phillips, and I teach math at Southern West Virginia Community College, and I've taught math for 30 years. Uh, I can teach you basic math, I can teach calculus, I can teach algebra, I can teach a little bit of everything. Uh, but this will just be, uh, the course I'm going to teach right now uh, is going to be just a basic math course on how to add fractions, how to add decimals, how to multiply fractions, divide decimals, uh, work work with percents and the percent equation and the percent change problem uh, uh, math tricks uh, how which way you move your decimal point when you multiply or divide by powers of 10 and you know how to do different uh, multiplication tricks without using a calculator and uh, and then the order of operations uh, that's please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. P is for parentheses, E is for exponents, M is multiply, D is divide, A is add, and S is subtract. Okay, it's very important that you follow the right order of operations uh, when you use the uh, when when you uh, when you evaluate an expression. Okay, if you don't follow the order of operations when you evaluate an expression, you could get the wrong answer. So uh, you have to follow the order of operations, which I'll talk about later on in another video. Also, we're going to talk about how you solve a linear equation, which is one of the basic things about topics about um, algebra. Okay, you have to isolate the variable, and we could talk about that also in a video. And then we'll talk about how you graph and write a linear equation given two points. And then last, we'll talk about how you solve a a quadratic equation and how you identify what a quadratic equation is and there's about three different ways you can solve a quadratic equation one is by factoring another one is by um, completing the square and a third is using the quadratic formula okay now these are all important things to know when you take the ACT test or the SAT test but the ACT test involves a lot of other topics other than the ones we've just talked about so, but you need uh, uh, to be able to understand some things in life. You need a really good understanding of uh, the math topics. Okay, people need it for to go into nursing and take the nursing test. I mean, there's uh, it could be used in a lot of different ways. They need it. Sometimes men who go work in the coal mines have to pass the basic, basic math test. I had to tutor a student at the college I work at because he had to go back get in the mines. He couldn't pass the math test. So, I mean, math is required for really every, every uh, profession, okay? Uh, you can't get in any profession unless you know the basics of math. Uh, it's even to count change uh, if you're a uh, work as cashier. Of course, I know that does not involve solving a linear equation, but you still need to know the basic things about math. Okay, uh, and it's good to know how to do some computations without a calculator because sometimes you don't have a calculator handy. I mean, when I go shop at the grocery store, I like to have me, uh, I try to, an estimate of how much my grocery is going to cost before I check out. That way I know if I've got enough money to pay for my groceries. So I try, you know, I know about exactly, uh, about what my bill is going to be with, and I don't carry a calculator with me when I'm in the store shopping. So anyway, we, we use math in a lot of different ways in our lives all the time. So anyway, I will try my best to see that you achieve your potential in this course. I'll, if you have any questions, I could give you my email address and I, uh, you could contact me by email and I'll be glad to answer any questions you have about any math topic. Okay, uh, and by the way, there, uh, this course is not going to be a charge, it'll be offered free. But the next course I offer, there'll be a charge. But I probably only charge $9.99 per student per class. And he, uh, Udemy offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. Okay, so you really can't go wrong as far as taking a course through Udemy. Okay, uh, so, I mean, if you take my class and you're not happy with it, you could go to Udemy and ask for your money back, and they're supposed to, uh, they'll refund your money. Also, I think there, there are coupons you can get, and you could get it with, somehow, I'm not sure how to get the coupon, but I could check it out, and you know, can, you could all take the class and not have to try to pay anything for it. I mean, for not this course, but another course I might offer, or for any other classes offered through Udemy. 
So, I mean, they offer quite lots and lots of classes to Udemy. But anyway, I really, really hope that you take my class. Okay, if you have any questions, please let me know. And I uh, will go over a lot of different topics. And I really hope that you achieve your potential in this course. And thank you very much. And it'll be nice to see you in, in the course in the next video. Okay, have a nice day. Hello, I'm Verna Phillips, and we're going to talk about fractions today. We're going to talk about how you add fractions. Okay, uh, to add two fractions, let's say you want to add uh, uh, one eighth plus uh, three eighths, you'll have four eighths. Now that is not four sixteenths. You only add fractions that have the like denominators. If they aren't like the denominators, you have to make them the same denominator. So these are like denominators. You just add the numerators. But four eighths is really what? Four divided by four one time. Eight divided by four two times. So that's one half. But what if you have one third plus one fifth minus one tenth. Okay, now what's my common denominator? You cannot add one third, one fifth, and my subtract one tenth. Okay, ten won't divide by three, and ten does divide by five. Okay, our low, our highest denominator is ten. So, you pick the next highest multiple of 10, which is 20. 20 divides by 5, but not 3. And the next highest multiple of 10 is 30. 30 divides by 3, because 10 di 30 divided by 3 is 10. 30 divided by 5 is 6. And 10 divided by 10 is 1. So, our common denominator is 10. So, we make all denominators to be 10. Okay, now that last uh, fraction doesn't change any. 10 divided by 5 is 2, right? So 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 1 is 2. So 2 tenths and 1 fifth is the same fraction. Oh, uh, wait a minute. I um, messed up. I'm sorry. Uh, our common denominator is not 10. This is common denominator is 30. Okay, 30. Let's just erase this. Okay, now one third, I've got to go to brushes. One third plus one fifth minus one tenth. Now our common denominator is 30, okay? So 30, 30 divided by three 10 times, 30 to five six, and 30 to 10 is three. Thirty to three is 10, 10 times three is 30, 10 times one is 10. So one third and 10 30 is the same number. Six times five is 30, six times one six. And three times 10 is 30, three times one is three. This is 10 and six is 16 minus three is 13 thirtieths. But 13 won't divide by 30, 13, uh, 30 won't divide by 13. And that's a proper fraction because the numerator is less than your denominator. Anytime the numerator is less than your denominator is called a proper fraction. If the numerator is greater than or equal to your denominator, it's an improper fraction. And if they're both equal to each other, then it's just one. Now, I'm going to uh, make a new screen, okay? And add, that's adding unlike fractions. Now, what if you want to multiply fractions, 
okay let's say we have uh, one fifth times two thirds times one half okay you multiply your numerators one times two is two two times one is two five times three is fifteen times two is thirty two thirtieths two into two that reduces okay cause two divides by two one time 30 divided by two is 15 so that's 1 15 2 30 and 1 15 is the same fraction okay and let's say you want to multiply one uh, one fifth times two thirds times five eighths. Okay. Uh, now you have one times two is two, two times five is ten. Five times three is fifteen. 15 times 8 is what? 15 times 8 is, uh, we could say, 15 times 8 120. 10 over 120. Now, both of these end in 0. Okay, I can divide both of these by 10. 10 divided by 10 is 1. 120 divided by 10 is 12. So, 10 over 120 is 12. Anytime they end in a 0, you can divide them both by 10. Okay, and Now, let's say we want to multiply another fraction. 1 fifth times 1 third times uh, 1 half. Okay, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 5 times 3 is 15 times 2 is 30. 1 thirtieth. And let's say I have two fifteenths times ten over eleven times two thirds. Okay, I multiply my numerators together and my denominators together. 2 times 10 is 20, times 2 is 40. And then 15 times 11 times 3 is what? 15 times 11 times 3. Oh, that's 495. But both of those divide by 5. 40 into 5 is 8. And 495 is 99. Now, I divided my numerator and denominator by 5, and I got an equivalent fraction. So anytime you can divide the numerator and denominator by the same number, you're reducing the fraction because you're making the fraction smaller. If you multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number, you're expanding the fraction. So those are special rules that you need to know if you uh, study math. Okay, if you don't know those rules, then you aren't going to understand how to work these, uh, these kinds of problems with fractions. Okay, so you have to know what rules apply when. Now let's work another problem with adding fractions with unlike denominators. Okay.
okay? Our denominators is 2, 12, and 6. Our highest denominator is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6 times. 12 divided by 6 is 2 times. So we make our common denominator 12. Okay, 12 into 2 is 6. 12 into 1 is 12. 12 into 6 is 2. Only this is negative. 6 and 1 is 7. 7 minus 2 is 5 twelfths. 5 twelfths. So my answer to 1 half plus 1 twelfth minus 1 six is 5 twelfths. And you'll get the same answer if you'll change it to decimals. But I, uh, I wouldn't suggest that. Now we have denominators of 5, 20, and 3. And what's our lowest common denominator? 20 into 5 is 4. 20 into 1 is 2. 20. I mean 20, yeah. And 20 won't divide by 3. So what you have to pick the next size multiple of 20, which is 40. 40 into 5 is 8, but 40 into 3 won't work. And the next size multiple of 20 is 60. Does 60, 60 divided by 5, 3, uh, 12 times, 60 divided by 20 is 3, and 60 divided by 3 is 20. So 60 is our common denominator. We have to write this all three fractions over 60 because we're expanding all three fractions to be over 60. 12 times 5 is 60, 12 times 1 is 12. Okay, Th 3 times 20 is 60, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and uh, 60 into 3 is 20, 20 times negative 1 is negative 20. 12 minus 3 is 9, 9 minus 20 is what? is negative 11, negative 11 sixteenths. Okay, is our answer. Okay, because when you add a negative, a positive to a negative, it's going to be, the answer is going to be the, the higher of, of the two negative, the two numbers. Okay, the largest number is negative, so your answer is negative 11. Because 12 minus 3 is 9, and then you have 9, let's say it's 9 degrees outside, and then it drops 20 degrees. So if it's 9 degrees outside, drop 20 degrees, you're still negative 11. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to do for today. I'll see you next time. This is our first uh, video in this series for this class on operations with fractions. I really hope to see you next time. The next time, it'll be operations with decimals. Okay, so have a good day, and I'll talk to you later. Okay, hello everybody, this is operations with decimals. Okay, we're gonna talk about how you add decimals to start with. Okay, add decimals. Now to add decimals, you have to, the decimal points have to be in a straight row. So let's say you wanna add point 0.25 plus point 0.32. Five and two is seven, three and two is five, line up the decimal point, point 0.57. Okay, it's very important that you line your decimal points up. And let's say you have 1.32 plus point Oh, three, 
five. Okay, so that's one point three two plus point oh three five. So this is five, five, three, one point three five five. Okay, is your answer. So it's important that you line these decimal points up. I mean, there's a whole lot of difference here of $25 and $32, getting $57 versus 25 cents, 32 cents, and 57 cents. So that's why it's important to let you line your decimal points up. Okay, now we're gonna talk about how you multiply decimals. You have point, point, Six times point three. Six times three is eighteen. You have one decimal point here, one point there. So you line up two decimal points in your answer. So it's point one eight. Point six times point three is point one eighteen. Okay. So that's how you multiply two decimals together. Now, point point o oh eight times point three. Eight times three is 24. You have two decimal points here, one there. So that makes three, point zero oh two four. Okay, now we're talking about how you multiply decimals and how you add decimals. Now we're gonna talk about how you uh, divide decimals. Okay, let's say we want to divide divide point three by point two. Okay, our dividend has to be a whole number. So the dividend, you move it over one place here, one place there, that's the same as three divided by two, which is one time. 1.5 is my answer. So 0.3 divided by 0.2 is 1.5. Okay, now we've talked about how you add decimals, how you multiply decimals, and how you divide decimals. Okay, so another point about decimals is, let's say you want to find a decimal between two decimals. Okay, find, uh, find a decimal between Point two and point three. Okay, how would you do that? How would you find a decimal between point two and point three? I mean, there's no numbers between two and three, so you could say that's point two zero oh and point three zero, oh. and the numbers between twenty and thirty is. 21, 22, 23. So you could say it's point 21, point 22. Okay? So, or you could put, say point 200 zero zero and point 300. Zero zero. And then you have point 201 and point 301. So that that's how you find, that's called denseness of numbers. Okay? And really, if you go back to the problem we d did on fractions, it's the same thing with fractions. Okay, um, find a fraction between one third and one half. Okay, so a common denominator for one third and one half is what? Six. Uh, K 
okay? We're not adding these fractions together. All right, one-third is how many sixes? Six and three is two. Two times one is two. What time, six into two is three. Three times one is three. So it's a number between two, six, and three, six. And there's no number between two and three. But we could have a higher multiple of six. Let's say that's 12. Okay? Make it 12. So, 2 into 6, 12 into 6 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. 12 into 6 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6. So, the number between 4 twelves and 6 twelves is 5 twelves. 5 twelves. Okay, a fraction between 1 third and 1 half is 5 twelves. Okay, now that's all for today about operation with decimals, and I went over one other thing on fractions. Now we're going to go to, uh, the next one is percents. Okay, percents. First of all, we want to talk about how you change a percent to a decimal. Let's say you have 6%. We want to change, convert to a decimal. Change to a decimal. Okay, you drop the percent sign, you move your decimal point two places to the left, and the answer would be 0.06. Okay, so if you're ever working a problem, a simple interest problem or a percent problem, and you have to you have to change that percent to a decimal. If you don't, you're going to get it wrong. So you have to be able to change percents to decimals. Okay. So let's see if we could. Okay. I uh, let's start another problem with percents. Okay. Um, what? What is six percent of twenty? Okay, that means uh, you take six percent, change it to a decimal, so that's point oh six, and the word of means multiply. 20 times 0 0.06 is what? 20 times 0 0.06. Okay, uh, is, if you multiply 20 times 0 0.06, what do you get? One point two. Okay, so you uh, it's one point two. Six percent of twenty is one point two. Okay, and let's say you're asked to find five percent of what number. is 90. Okay, 5% of what number is 90? So you have to change the 5% to a decimal. That means drop the percent sign and move your decimal point two places to the left. So that's going to be 0.05 of means multiply times x equals 90. Now you have to solve this for x, divide both sides by 0.05. Okay, what's 90 divided by 0.05? Eighteen hundred. Okay, 90 divided by 0.05 is eighteen. Hundred. So five percent of eighteen hundred is ninety. That means a very small percent of eighteen hundred is ninety. 
So in other words, if you go shopping and you buy something for $1,800, the sales tax is 5%, you have to pay another $90 on the item to, for the sales tax. Okay, now another formula is called percent change. Percent change. Okay, and that's the new amount minus the original amount over original amount times 100 percent okay that's a formula for percent change okay so um all right now today um i have I have uh, two dimes and uh, tomorrow I will have three dimes. Okay, today I have two dimes and tomorrow I will have three dimes. What is the percent change? So it's the new amount, which is three minus two, over the original, which is two, times 100%. Okay, three minus two is one. So it's one half, which is times 100%, one half is 0.5, times 100%, and that'll be 50%. So it'll be 50% increase in dimes if I started out with two dimes, and then I ended up with three. Now, um, let's talk about some math tricks. Okay, anytime you multiply a number by 100, like if you want to multiply 20 times 100, you move the decimal point over two places. So it'll be 20 and add two zeros. It's 2,000. And if you divide 20 by 100, you move your decimal point over two places, which is 0.2. So if you multiply by 100, you move it over two places. If you divide by 100, you move it to the left two places. And that's just by multiply by powers of 10. Now what if you divide a number by 100? Let's say 30 divided by 1,000. 1,000 has three zeros, so you move your decimal point to the left three places. Okay, point 030, which is really the same thing as 0.03. Okay, 0.030 is the same thing as 0.03. And let's say um, I want to multiply 1, 125 times 11. Okay, if I add the numbers 1 plus 2 plus 5, I get what? No, uh, well, we'll write 1 and 1 and one and 2 is 3. 5 and 2 is 7. 1, 3, 7, 5. Okay, 
um, is that what's 125 times 11? Yes, that's it, 1375. So you add, just expand the, the outer numbers, add 1, 2, you get 3, 5, and 2, 7. So that's 11 trick, multiply by 11. What if you have Okay, this is how to graph a linear equation or how to write equation of a line given two points. Okay? We want to write write equation of a line. with two points. So you have negative 8, 1, and negative 3, 2. Okay, so we have to find the slope. So your slope is 2 minus 1 over negative 3 plus 8. which is one-fifth. So your equation of your line is y is mx plus b, y is one-fifth x plus b. And two is one-fifth times negative three plus b. So two is ten-fifths plus three-fifths is b. So thirteen-fifths is b. So y is one-fifth x plus 13 fifths. Y, y is 1 fifth X plus 13 fifths. Given those two points. All right, now we're going to talk about how you solve a quadratic equation, okay? So let's say that you have 2x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. Uh, let me, uh, let's think of another one. Okay, let's say you have x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. Now, one way to do this is to do it by factoring. You have x and x, okay, and the factors of 1 is 1, 1 and 1. 1x plus 1x is 2x, which matches the middle term. 1 times 1 is 1. x times x is x squared. Set both factors containing a variable equal to 0, and your variable is x. Okay, anytime you have an unknown in an equation, it's called a variable. So x is negative 1, x is negative 1. So that's how you solve a, a quadratic equation by factoring. And let's say you have x squared plus 3x plus 4 equals 0. Okay, a is 1, b is 3, c is 4. And x is negative 3 
plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4 over 2 times 1. So this is going to come out to be an imaginary number. So x is negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 16. It will be uh, negative 7 over 2. Okay, so it's called, anytime you get the square root of a negative number, it's called an imaginary number. Okay, so uh, anyway, I've gone over the basis of how to solve a quadratic equation, a linear equation, and I've done, we've done a lot of things, so I've really hoped you've uh, learned something from all this material that I've gone over in this class. We've done, gone over several videos, and I, I really hope you've achieved your potential. Uh, if you'd like to contact me by email, my email is v v s c h w a l b and the symbol at yahoo.com. Okay, if anybody would like to contact me. Okay, I really hope you achieved something from this, uh, these videos. Okay, I will, uh, this one is going to be for free. It will not cost you a dime. So, I, and, but I will, I am planning to offer some uh, that will charge money. And uh, I plan to offer several of them. So, I really hope that you will take my classes and I will, if you have any questions or anything you have comments on or anything that you like to talk to me about, please get in touch with me, okay? And I'll try to get back to you by my emails, okay? And thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the class. Okay, now we're on solving a linear equation, okay? So, to solve in a linear equation, you have 2x plus 1 equals 4. You have to bring the 1 across. 2x is 4 minus 1. So, 2x equals 3. Divide both sides by 2. And you get x is 3 halves. Okay, x is 3 halves, and you could check it by replacing x with 3 halves in the equation. 
So it'll be 2 times 3 halves plus 1. Does that equal 4? 2 times 3 halves is 3, and 3 plus 1 is 4. So both sides equal 4. Okay, so let's say I have 2 thirds x plus 1 half equals 1 6. Okay, your common denominator is 6. So we can multiply the whole equation here by 6. And if we do that, we can get rid of our fractions. So 6 into 3 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. That's 4x. And 6 into 2 is 3. 6 times 1 6 is 1. 4x equals 1 minus 3. 4x is negative 2. And then divide both sides by 4. x is negative 1 half. 2 fourths reduces to 1 half. Okay. So that's how we solved a, a linear equation. Okay, now let's say you want to solve 2x plus 1 half equals five, uh, 4 thirds. Okay, our common denominator is 6. Multiply everything by 6. 6 times 2x is 12x. 6 times 1 half is 3. 6 and 3 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, so now that equation becomes 12x plus 3 equals 8. So 12x equals 8 minus 3, 12x is 5, and then divide both sides by 12. So x is 5 twelfths. Okay, so that's how you solve a linear equation. Now, um, Let's say you want to solve 3x plus 5 eighths x plus 1 half equals 1 fifth. Okay, now what's our common denominator? Our largest denominator is 8. So 8 won't work. The next highest power of 8 is 16. That won't work. The next highest power of 8 is 24. That won't work. 32 won't work. 40. Okay, common denominator is 40. Multiply. If you multiply one term in this equation by 40, you have to multiply them all by 40. Okay, 40 times 3x is 120x plus 40 into 8 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. X. 40 into 2 is 20. Equals 8. Okay. And 120 plus 25. 120X plus 25X is 145X. Equals 8 minus 20. So 145x is negative 12. And uh, divide both sides by 145. So x is negative 12 divided by 145.
now I'm going to show, uh, um, all right, now we're going to end this video. Okay, now we're going to talk about operations with whole numbers. Okay, if you multiply a positive times a negative, multiply, you get a negative. Okay, two times three is six, one's positive, one's negative. So positive times a negative is a negative. But if you multiply two negatives, you get a positive. Four times two is eight. A negative times a negative is a positive. Or two positives multiplied together is a positive. Okay? But what if you multiply positive negative two times positive three? It's still going to be a negative. So if they're like, unlike signs, the answer is negative. If they're like, the answer is positive. Um, also, if you add, subtract uh, numbers, let's say 4 minus 6, okay, 6 minus 4, you say 6 minus 4 is 2, your answer is negative because the higher number is negative, 6 is the negative and the largest of the two, so it's like it's four degrees outside and it drops six degrees so it's going to be still two below zero so that's how you add negative and positive numbers and uh, okay and then um Let's say you have 3 times negative 2 times negative 4. Okay, 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. 2 negatives is a positive times a positive is a positive. So we could say it's positive 24 or just 24. And... Five minus two minus three is five. Minus two and minus three is minus five. Five minus five is zero. So it's five. You have five. Let's say five suckers. You take away two. You end up with three. Somebody takes those three away from you. You end up with zero. So five minus two minus three is zero. Now we're going to talk about op, uh, the order of operations. Okay, order of operations is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay, so P is for parentheses. You always do what's in the parentheses first. Any time you see an expression, you have to evaluate. Okay, parentheses. So let's say you have two plus three squared minus one times two. Okay, always, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, parentheses first, and inside the parentheses, you have to follow the order of operations, so you have to do the exponent. So this is two plus nine minus one times two, which is what? Two plus eight times 2, and 8 times 2 is what? You have to, uh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, parentheses, exponents, multiply or divide in order from left to right. So you have to multiply 8 times 2. You do not add 2 plus 8 yet, or you don't add at all. You add 8, multiply 8 times 2, you get 16. 2 plus 16 is 18. Okay, so this is using the order of operations okay order of operations please excuse my dear aunt sally okay so let's say we have five 
5 squared plus 2 squared minus 1 times 3 squared. Okay, and in the parentheses you have 5 squared. You do what's in the parentheses first, which you have to do your exponents first. So it's 4 minus 1. And this is 5 squared plus 3 times 3 squared. And this is what you have to evaluate your exponent. So this is 25 plus 3 times 9. And you have to multiply first. 25 plus 27 which is 52. Okay, that's the way I evaluate that expression. Okay. Now, uh, let's say we have 5 to the 0 power plus 1 plus uh, 2 squared minus 1 times 3. Okay, 5 to the 0 power. Any number to the 0 power is 1 except for 0 to the 0 power. 0 to the 0 power is undefined. But 5 to the 0 power is defined to be 1 plus, you do what's in the parentheses, 4 